Hello, everybody, and welcome to Conversations with Friends. I love these conversations, you know, because I learn and I, I really hope with all my heart that you all learn. I know you're going to learn today, though, something very, very powerful, something that can just might change the way you think in life. Um, Lincoln Greenidge is uh, he's actually a, a financial executive of a big company of a company. And let me read this so I get it right. Uh, president and CEO of Sandfire Resources America. He has been an executive for many, many years of his career. But in addition to that, he's also a multi-award winning, world-renowned executive and public speaker and an International Association of Top Professionals Hall of Famer. And I had to read that because I didn't want to get that wrong, you know, and much more. If you have time, I could read to you about him a few pages worth. Uh, of all the accomplishments that he's had. But again, we're not really here to just talk about his accomplishments, in fact. We're here to learn from Lincoln and learn about his new book. And that is what we're gonna learn a lot from today. It's called No More Excuses. And I just wanna, can you see that? Is everything okay there, Lincoln? You can see it? Yes, I can, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I wanna read the second part, taking the first step to living a life of purpose with meaning. And this book, it's not a gigantic book, you don't have to read a zillion pages, is so empowering. And it did have an effect on my life. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh, it's a pleasure getting to interview you, Lincoln. It's and a pleasure to be with you, Meredith. Thanks for uh, uh, having me on, your, your, on this call. Thank you so much. Yes, because, um, you know, the Brahma Kumaris were all about meditation and change, um, you know, changing our lives for the better through our thoughts. And I didn't, I don't think I realized the obstacle of excuses, the, that it, it causes an obstacle in our lives that actually keeps us from doing things that we want to do. So maybe could you explain how you came across this and how you began to research this and into a book, a great book. <laughs> well, thanks for asking. Yeah. Um, it 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 came naturally. Um, why? Uh, I have listened to many uh, people within my family and friends. I've also uh, been more uh, thoughtful about my own life and um, and the excuses that I have made, um, and came to the realization that listen it really boiled down to uh, the fact that those excuses gave me a bit of comfort, <laughs> right? Um, a, a bit of comfort, yet um, I, 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 I was still at the same spot. And I looked, you know, so, you know, it's always important to look within, but around me, I saw people who I really wanted to see them succeed in many ways they were very talented or still are <laughs> very talented, but what kept them from, um, you know, stepping into the light, if you will, mm -hmm. or, or realizing their, their potential was every time I asked them questions about what, you know, why they were not doing what, uh, you know, we discussed years ago or months ago, there was always an excuse. Uh, one excuse after the next. And if you read the last chapter before, my, you know, the, um, uh, just before the, the, the last chapter, yeah, and it's yeah. called but. but. But, but. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so it, 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 and the reason, and so I um, decided that I would write this book um, and it was intentional that the first chapter was uh, Waiting on God for a sign. And uh, it was also intentional that the last chapter be but for the many reasons that uh, these are one of the two uh, greatest excuses I've heard in one way or the other. And that every time someone has told me, yes, you know, I, um, I just haven't had the time uh, to, uh, or I was going to do it, but uh, there's always <laughs> the word but. <laughs> and um, so I thought, you know, instead of, continuing to uh, um, to see that happen. Uh, writing the book hopefully would inspire others to realize within their own self that, oh. um, the, that the, the reason why they are not 
doing what they had set out to do in their minds is that um, excuses were a way, uh, as I call it, a warm embrace that <laughs> distracted them from realizing that the true power from was with from within, um, and that um, you know the only way to actually get beyond and really live a life of purpose with meaning was to stop with their excuses and uh, realize that potential and um, and the possibilities um so in my own life instead of actually saying you know i'd really like to write a book about uh, this because i see it all the time yeah uh, that I wanted to live the book. <laughs> and in order to live the book, it means that I had to actually not make an excuse for my own self, but to actually write the book about what I would, I said I would do. So this is the sort of the first step for me. So the journey is not just me saying to people, you know, to no more excuses, but um, continuing to live my own excuses, but for it's me to actually hard. live it. It's so it was, it, then, so right? it's a very personal, absolutely. Yeah. So that's basically how it sort of uh, unfolded, if you will. And it was written very quickly because it uh, came naturally, natural to me. It's not fiction, right? <laughs> you know? Well, how did you do the research? I mean, did you yeah. go in search of people and listen to what they were saying? Someone no, says, I'm no, busy, no, a... or I'm waiting for a message from God to do something, or no. I would do it, but I don't have enough money to do to do. Did you kind of check out well, people? Into what so, so her, yeah, no, thanks for asking. So here's the beauty of the book, No More Excuses, is that my whole life, you know, I'm 54 now, and my whole life has been the research, <laughs> right? That's, you know, I, I didn't have it. to go, you know, it. it's, it's not one of those things where I had to actually go and research something that I had not encountered. Um, all I did was term paper. Pull. It wasn't a term paper for you. In yes, college. it wasn't a term paper for college. It was really pulling from my experiences, the years of listening to people make excuses, the years of me also making my own excuses for uh, not uh, doing what I should uh, do. And uh, it's only a few years ago that I started, uh, and I've always been very positive minded, um, but it takes more than just being a positive minded person. You have to act, you have to do. You know, mm. you cannot just say, but you have to do. Actions do speak louder than words. And, um, and actions are, 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 are sort of the direct opposite of an excuse because it's, those excuses are always part of uh, what you say to um, support your inaction. Mm. So yes, there was, uh, there was no need to do any research because the research had already been done through my life experiences. So it was all there in your head somewhere. Yes. You just access yes. it, right? Yes. All these experiences. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking of, you know, that one thing that I hear people say all the time, and I know I'm one of them. Uh, I'm too busy. They'll say, can you do this? Can you help me do this? And I, and right. I go, oh, well, like, I'm really too busy right now. What, after reading your book, I've come to realize that I really put up a block, don't I, from doing, I, I put up a wall when I say I'm, I'm really too busy right now you know, to help you do that or do that yes. myself. Yes. So, what, so what, what does one say? Yes to everything or? No, I mean, actually, you know. actually one, one doesn't say yes, but one should be, and I hate to actually um, uh, use that uh, uh, um, example, but I, I, I saw Elon Musk uh, being interviewed recently. And every time he was asked a question, he seemed to pause. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And and he had that thoughtful look, right? Yeah. Where you're pondering the question mm -hmm. and also trying to ensure that his answer was thoughtful rather than just a joke react um uh, a response. And I think that is what the starting point is, is that to 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 not just respond yes or no, but to understand and to get more into you understand that you're busy, but the question is what your response has to be okay i'm busy doing lots of things because we're all busy doing lots of things but that this is where you have to pause and say, ask yourself what is it that i've been i'm now being asked number one hmm. number two 
how, how does it prioritize in the, in the things that I'm doing, right? Mm. And, and how does it fit within my, for my, in, in, into my overall purpose? Because mm. I believe everyone's purpose is in the service of others. And when you start asking the questions, then you realize that some of what you're doing are not purposeful. They, they, it's not aligned with your purpose. And what mm. you are now asked to do, maybe. And that's mm -hmm. how you come up with the uh, decision as to whether you say yes or no. And it may be not yes today, but it may be yes tomorrow. But at least it's thoughtful. And most people don't think about it because all they're thinking about is all the stuff that, I mean, if you step back and you ask yourself, okay, I'm busy. Uh, but what am I busy doing? Is it purposeful? <laughs> you, you, you may be shocked. <laughs> you may be shocked. You actually might be busy just occupying your time because uh, it's, it's uh, comforting. You know, you, you've been doing it for a long time and so forth, right? Because you, you may not want to actually fess up to the, re to the reality that 80% of what you're doing is not aligned with your purpose. Um, but it's, it's easy. It's comforting, right? You, it's not as risky as taking that first step, that step into a life of real uh, commitment to a, a, a lifelong journey of joy and, and peace. Uh, you know, because that's not necessarily always easy, but it's fulfilling. But you have to stop and ask these questions. What is it? Um, uh, is it uh, uh, aligned with my purpose? Mm. And, um, and, and is it aligned with my purpose that it can actually extend what I'm doing? So, for example, what I'm doing now, can I replace it with this new thing, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You know, which is more aligned with my purpose. And if that's the case, then I tell you, it's, it's, your life will never be the same. Mm. That is so powerful. And so it, it really, uh, what this brings to me from what you're saying is constant growth, not yes. just saying, oh, I'm busy because I've been doing the same 10 things, you know, for the last 10 years. And I, I don't even care about these things anymore. I'm not even that interested. Maybe I'm going to, uh, you know, I don't want to say a yoga class. I don't mean yoga, but you know, some kind of a class that maybe I don't want to do that anymore. I want to try something Precis else. Precisely. I'm not talking about yoga. I'm talking about just a class, you know, and maybe yes. it's time to, so it requires, it really requires reflection and yes. looking at my life and saying, okay, is this aligned? The things that I do, is it aligned with my purpose? Um, yes. And maybe there are things you can just cut out, but if you, it's a habit, isn't it? It's a habit, well, excuse me. Almost it is like a, a drug, you know? Yeah. I hate to say it, but it is like a drug. Oh, you know, you just say it, uh, you know, or, you know, people take things, you know, whether it's, I don't want to say medicine or pills or whatever that maybe they don't need anymore, but they've been taking it for so long. It could just be, you know, they think that they need it. And so we think we need these excuses. So I wanted yes. to just share a few more of them, Lincoln, because there's so many. Okay, the I'm too busy one, that was yes. what spoke to me. It really, because I do that. I know that I do that and I don't really think I'm as busy as I think I am. <laughs> I'm not. Okay, how about I would love to have a business, you know, start my own business. Your chapter is I don't have enough money. Maybe right. speak to People seriously don't have enough money to, you know, well, start a business. So, so the way I put it uh, in my book, and it's 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 proven one hundred percent effective or true uh -huh. that it's not about the fact that you do not have the money. Yeah. What are you going to do to get it? Mm, Think about uh, it. What right. are you going to do to get it? Because we all can. See, you see, the self-gratification or the instant gratification is what causes people, and greed, <laughs> what causes people not to actually look beyond. Everybody wants to get it now. You know, people want to buy, pay, play the lottery because, you know, that's the quickest way. But is it? <laughs> I mean, what are the chances that you win the lottery, right? But some people I, just I, don't yeah. want to put in the time, the effort, the commitment, the sacrifice, you know, to get there. So let's assume, for example, you want to start a new business and it costs $50,000 mm. or 10,000 or 15 or whatever it is. 
then it shouldn't be, oh, shit, you know what? I'll just give up because I don't have the money. It'll be good for me to do it and it will be very fulfilling and it's a passion for me and it's something that I'm very skilled at, but I don't have the money. Instead, why don't you ask the question? So that's the excuse. I don't have the money. Yeah, so then you I don't, don't do it. Money. Yeah. So why don't you say, okay, you know what? I'm determined to do it. I do not have the money now. What do I need to do mm. to get the money? That's do I the need next to, question. That's the next question. What do I need to get? Need you have to, to ask it. that and then you need to go to the next step. Because you trust me, if you ask the question, I fervently ask the question, you will get the answer. The answer may be, you need to partner with someone. You need to get a, 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 another job, right? Uh, you may need to get a second job or you may need to actually leave the one you have and go to another one. You may need to um, uh, look for investors. I mean, mm. there are many avenues, but in order to do that, you have to step outside your comfort zone. You can, thought- right? Because your, your comfort zone is the excuse. <laughs> it's easy to actually make an excuse. You make an excuse and you continue living your life uh, the way that you are currently living. But when you actually step outside the comfort zone, you realize that there has been no person on earth who has ever been successful at anything, mm. who's done things in, within the comfort zone. They've always mm. stepped out. They've always believed in themselves. They've always said to themselves, no, I will make no excuse. They may, they may not say it uh, out loud that I'm not making an excuse. I'm just going to do it. But their, their actions, basically, and their words are aligned that there are no more excuses, that they will make no excuse, that they will actually seek uh, to do what they want to do. And they'll find the solutions rather than uh, highlight the problems. Because trust me, if you look for problems, you'll find them. If you look for excuses, <laughs> if you look for, and then you will make excuses for them. If you look for opportunities and solutions, you'll find them too. Mm. As, as you see in my book, I always end, the choice is yours. It's a choice. You do have a choice, but you're um, most people, and I, I, I like I say, I, I see myself in this book in certain ways. In certain ways, no, but you know, yeah. yes, um, uh, you know that I can change. So I have to be able to be aware of what is thwarting me from things. You know that maybe that yes. I want to do that I haven't done. And so anytime, what I'm getting from you is anytime we have a problem or something we want to do, we have to go within. Yes. And ask that question, you know, yeah. first of all, why do I want to do it? Right. Because. Yes. Maybe, and second, you know, what's it going to take? Like, what is it going to take? Maybe a person wants to take a trip, but they don't have, you know, maybe people to take care of their child or, or they don't yeah. have, like you say, the money or, or whatever, or, um, you know, or the time at their work. But if you go inside, there's going to be an answer, isn't there? Some kind of there, an answer. Absolutely. There's, there's going to be an answer. And it may not be now. It may be later. It may be a different time. It may not be yeah. this year, next year. But yeah. at least you would be striving towards this goal. Uh, what people do often is that they don't, they're not aware. Or they, they, they put this wall up. And when you put the wall up, it's fear and doubt that gets in the way of you just acknowledging, listen. It exists. So mm. fear exists, right? Doubt exists. But courage is actually in spite of fear and doubt that you still are aware and you, and you move forward. And that's what no excuses is. For example, now, many people tell me, you know, I used to make those excuses, but every time I say these excuses or I think it in my head, I think of your book and I think, oh, <laughs> shoot, you know what? I'm making an excuse. <laughs> so so they, they completely now are aware that they are making excuses and they are so excited that they can make that change because, you know, you, you, number one, you don't want to say it, but before you say it, you, you have to think it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you want to remove it out of your mind completely. So even when in your mind you start, if someone asks you a question and you, you're already going to say, but, or you're going to actually make an excuse, I'm too busy, you pause and you realize, no, that's not the right answer because that's an excuse. <laughs> It's been um, aware. I think you use the word aware. Yeah. Aware. So it requires awareness. It requires yes. reflection. 
So yeah. I'm just curious, um, do you have any kind of a spiritual practice or meditation or anything? Uh, you know, it, I, I don't know. You, I get the feeling that you do have something that you do because you're so reflective and thoughtful. So make it your own that you've come up with or whatever. I'm not um, sure. Well, I do not uh, no. have a one. Um, yeah. You don't uh, have to. My, 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 my very essence is that I am a positive person who believes that um, almost everything is possible. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Um, and I say almost because I'm very, uh, I'm very critical of myself and words. People, you know, like you, you don't, you shouldn't tell a tell a child you can do anything you put set your mind to. Well, I'm literal. Yeah. No, because if you wanted to bark like a dog or be a dog, <laughs> <laughs> or you wanted to fly like a bird, no, you're not a bird. Yeah. So you right. So that's not anything. So I'm but, but but so so instead, what I say to, so, to them is that you are amazing in 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 many ways. You have skills that will be that you will understand, you will nurture, and you'll harness that uh and your possibilities are endless mm. that's what right you see those are now someone can believe that because it's true you're not fooling anyone it's true what i've just said right i don't believe in fooling yeah. people, telling them things that uh, are not possible possibilities are endless but the possibilities for individuals are individual you right the possibilities that you have are different than possibilities that i have the, the the potential that you have is different than the potential I, that I have. The potential that Amar has is different than the potential that you and I. Everyone has an individual potential. The key is that everyone has. Everyone. everyone. When, you look, when you look at people who are born with certain ailments, a uh, guy with no legs and, and, and the like, and, and, and the amazing things that they have done. Why? Because they didn't make excuses. Mm. When you look at these people, I mean, and they exist, and people say, well, these are exceptions. I'm like, well, you know why they're exceptions? Mm -hmm. Because most people conform. And when you don't conform, you realize that you are able-bodied in many ways, and it actually starts with your mind. Mm -hmm. That's why so the power of the mind is, 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 is phenomenal, and that's why you do meditation and so forth, because you, uh, it, it, it frees your mind from the limits that you put on yourself. Because remember, the limits are what we put on ourselves. Not what society puts on us, it's what we put on ourselves. And excuses are just a way to, uh, uh, to comfort us with those limitations that we put on ourselves. And I'm saying, free yourselves, free your mind, and your success will be unlimited. And what I love here is at the bottom of your book, I'm just going to hold the book up again. No more excuses. Okay. Lincoln EC Greenwich. It's on Amazon. Um, and it's uh, also no more excuses, taking the first step to living a life of purpose with meaning. So it isn't just to fill up your life with more stuff, right? Right. More yes. It really is about filling yourself up with having meaning in your life and and having a purpose. And that's, you know, a lot of people might think, well, how can I have a purpose? I work at, uh, you know, I work, well, I don't want to say a bakery, because a bakery, you can have purpose. It's a great place maybe to well, work. Well, but well, everywhere, you know what I'm saying? To be a everywhere <coughs> you can have purpose. Think about it this way. So remember, I believe everyone's purpose is to serve. So think about the person who picks up your garbage is serving, Uh huh. right? <laughs> Lot. <laughs> because let let's let them not pick up your garbage and see how that works. How, how that works. One right. day, right? Um, the, the the person who actually delivers groceries and food and so forth to the grocery store, so you can buy, it, you can purchase it. The person who actually uh, fills the store with medication and the doctors and and and, and the people who sweep the, the streets, um, um, the the carpenters. The, the plumbers, uh, who, I mean, they, they just go on and on. Every single person, the people who provide spiritual, uh, uh, um, um, uh, you know, advice and, right. and, 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 and business advice and family advice and children advice. And it just goes on and on. Pet care advice <laughs> or pet care. It doesn't matter. There is not a single job. 
that, that you is know, not uh, that is not aligned with service. The beautiful. question is, beautiful. how do you do it so that the people that you serve, yeah. right, find value in what you do? Because remember, in life, you have a choice. You you can serve with animosity and and or you can serve with a quality of care, quality of uh, that people can, you know, have you ever received service that is just beyond you? Like you just can't believe that person is in the service industry, whether it's a waiter, waitress, or or you call someone on the phone and uh, a, a helpline. Oh, it doesn't matter, and you are just astounded by the fact that they can deliver a service with such a smile, such caring, and so forth, because they've chosen to be that way. You are right. And, and they're, you have they're the other side. The world. They're making a difference. I, I just want to quickly share um, a story actually about your mother. And I don't yeah. think you know that I, I know your sister very well. Uh, she's a force in our community in South Florida. The yeah. events that she puts on Nicole Shelley Greenidge, and then she's got another last name too. But let's Practical. just go that. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, the events that she does, she founded what the uh, nonprofit for people making a difference. And yeah. she's done so much continues to do and her energy is like i was wondering you know where did she get that from well I have she, she's amazing she is phenomenal she speaks nine languages uh, fluently she uh is a foster uh, of nature i gotta tell you her heart is uh, full of energy and purpose and 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 she's like i mean i know she's my sister so <laughs> I can, you know but uh she's she's phenomenal in so many ways i i i, I just love her so dearly and she never gives up, you know, she'll write yeah. and say, come to this. And I go, I don't know. I'm busy. I say that to her a lot of times. I'm busy. And then I yeah. write again. Can you come to this event? This is going to be uh, spiritual and there's going to really be good people there because she knows what yeah. gets to me. And uh, I, I'm busy. And then I look at it again. At some point, I give in to Nicole if I can, you know, if I yeah. can. Um, yeah. But I did want to end with, uh, I mean, what you have to say is just, it's simple, but yet it's so deep. It is so deep, this book, really, Thank really. Um, I, your mother, I knew through Nicole, because Nicole used to come actually to some meditation classes. And we were doing an event. I love your mother. Um, she is, she's a powerful force herself. Wasn't she a businesswoman in St. Lucia, where you're all from? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, your father was out to help save the world. And yes, he was. <laughs> quite a family, quite a family. So your yeah. mother, uh, Nicole was busy that night. We were doing a spiritual event at the University of Miami on healing. At the University of Miami, uh, we had a room there. And I guess at the last minute or something happened, Nicole, your sister, she couldn't come. And I didn't know this, you know, I didn't know she couldn't come or she, and your mother had no way to get there. Your mother was visiting her in Miami, pretty far from the University of Miami. And your mother shows up and I said, how did you get here? How did you get here? And she said, I took the bus. And I, I was like, so touched. She said, you know, they, that's before Ubers. This is some years ago. You know, I mean, if there were Ubers, we didn't really take them. You know, people weren't taking them yet. And yes. I gave her a ride home when I found out, of course. But um, I was so touched. She goes, I wanted to be there for this event. I wanted to be there. And she said she said she was going to be there. And she was. And that that says something about your mom, huh? Yeah, no, absolutely. She's And she supported us. I mean, my mom will go to the ends of the earth by bus if necessary she'll take her five days seven days doesn't matter uh if she commits to doing something uh she would do it and without and she will never complain and maybe that's why you know we 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 are who we are um we well, don't I, complain so <laughs> it's from our mom for sure beautiful it helps to have inspiring parents but some people yeah. don't and from what i yes. get your book and other spiritual things that i have learned and read um you can still change right you, you don't have to come up with the best life. You weren't maybe born with the perfect life, no. but get rid of your excuses, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and realize that the power to change is within you. It's not outside of you. It's within you. So that's mm. important to understand. Thank you so much, Lincoln, Thank you for, for joining us, taking the time. I know you're running companies and speaking all over the world. Yeah. And um, yeah. I really appreciate that you said yes, you know, to being on our program. Um, Thank you so much. So, so enlightening. Uh, it, and it's so aligned with the work that we do, you know, our spiritual group, the Brahma Kumaris. It really is. So wonderful to interview you. Thank you.
Thank you so much. And listen, all the success to you in everything you do. Uh, continue to actually be the light that you want in the world. Thank you so much. We're going to work on that right now, right? Just yeah. be the light, everyone out there. Yes. That's our meditation practice. But we forget, you know, we forget. No, and, and that's why meditation is not something that's one off. It's something that has is a continuous process that you need to do on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And just like I think getting rid of some of these excuses, you got to do yeah. it. You can't just do it once. <laughs> it didn't work, you know, it didn't work. Um, yeah. yes. It's a pleasure getting to interview you, Lincoln.